Hey, Pan, how's it going? That reminds me. One sec. I guess I can just mute here. Okay, yeah, we're good, man. I'm a little more done. It's all right. It's, it's alive. It's there. I apologize in advance for needing to clear my throat. Consistently, I've just had the worst cough slash, like, uh, I don't want to say sore throat, but just like uncomfortable throat <laughs> for like three, four days now since I got back to my house. And it's just annoying. gonna leave this in there like that as people join up we're starting at like 8 p.m um so i'm sure more people will file in the buzz it's gonna be late uh hello i don't know how to pronounce your name uh i want to read it as like aot Cicino, but i don't know if that's accurate also just let you know i might not be super focused on chat as discussion gets into it, I'm mainly streaming this for uh, recording sake. Hello. Hello. Hey, uh, Byron. Hi. I'm mainly re recording this for anyone to go back and watch it who, who wants to not be bad at Olimar this year. True. I might as well close my end of them. I'm getting extra sounds from the highway. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, hopefully more people join up in the coming months. I'm I'm a little annoyed that the buzz is gonna be late because I felt like he wanted to do this. Yeah. <laughs> but um me bitching Because of the buzz being it. late though, I assume Sherzo might show up later though. What'd you say? I assume because of the buzz being late, Sherzo might show up. Could be, yeah. Could be. And uh I think there'll be a, a nice kind of diversity in here. It's not just top all of our players, it's it's the you know the, the every man's Olimar, the lab monster, the the aspiring captain. So there will be some some <clears throat> diverse opinions, even if not fully uh always agreed on. <clears throat> yeah, you know, honestly, having like basically all levels in here definitely helps perspective. Yeah, yeah, I, I think uh there's something that I because I if I'm being honest, I feel like there's a bit of a disconnect. In the mm -hmm. way that top Olimars tend to view the game and how to approach the character to the lower level. There's like just like a different way we approach uh, how to interact and, and I think the general pacing of the character. And which makes sense. I mean, you're obviously the best at anything you're going oh, to tend to be a bit faster on that end. But I, I've got some uh, ideas. I kind of touched down mm -hmm. on it in, in the Discord the other day on where I think we're falling flat. Um, but I don't I don't really have like a, yeah. a great... Um, solution for those because a lot of it feels so uh i don't want to say abstract but it's like if you do this consistently like i don't want to say perfect but really well then it works but how is that consistency rate supposed to be you know up or how do you play in a way where you're consistently yeah. like uh <clears throat> doing it but i i think i'm gonna give it a couple more minutes see if anyone else joins up because i think i would like at least one or two more people in here and then i'll try and because i'm gonna try and direct this just in a general rhythm so we don't get off topic too much but i'll start mm -hmm. with like one topic and kind of go from there yeah i i, I assume the buzz didn't prep anything <laughs> probably not no one one thing i do think is nice as well is that with being said all the basically all the levels of olimar come in we do get the perspective of different players and i believe not just in smash but in general like you could learn something from like uh, the the worst o2 or ever right Okay. That's just the way okay. information works. Yeah, I think there's... It's definitely always worth hearing what they have to say. Yeah, um, exactly. And, and kind of taking it how you will. I will say one thing I tend to find with uh, all of our players, uh, I guess kind of in mass, as as you work, as you find them working their way up to the, the 
hierarchy of skill <clears throat> is that a lot of the uh a lot of Ulmer players just tend to get overwhelmed very easily and i think that often ops in like that results in them shutting down not necessarily like freezing yeah. up in their gameplay but there's just a lot of slowness there that leaves so much room for optimization um not just in their general gameplay but where they're interacting their opponent they're taking it like one for one when they need to be kind of a step ahead because when you're playing Olimar, you can't if, if you're playing like a reactionary game so to speak you're already too slow like it needs to be you you can react in certain instances but you have to have a greater understanding of the situation you're in or you're probably just going to get outclassed a lot of the time like yeah, if you are reacting I, I would... or reading it's um, sorry no, no no i was gonna say if you're reacting or reading it's usually because you have an idea of how a, a situation's about to go and you're preparing for certain things uh but it's yeah. like if you're trying to react to like fox dash attack and run away or do whatever then you might be leaving yourself in a more difficult position yeah absolutely i feel like uh when you play olimar you should treat you should treat every matchup as chic for example you can't really like punish on a reaction for some characters like mario and air I, I, to my knowledge, there's absolutely nothing Olimar can do outside of, like, roll away. Yeah. Right? It's <clears> like, <throat> in that situation, you can't react and punish. They're just gonna, like, rinse, repeat, doing safe options on your shield. You need to, like, oh, they're gonna drift in there this time, so I'm gonna back up, hit them with a F smash as they land, something like that. Yeah, I... And that's something else that I, I just... I, I will stand by this uh, until I, I die. All of our players need to parry. That there is absolutely oh, yeah, no absolutely. reason to not be parrying because the amount of punish options you open up, it just it's it's required. And <clears throat> to take that a step further, you have to like you have to one be able to identify what am I parrying? Is it gonna kill my picker? Right? So my picker have enough health? Does mm -hmm. it is there move stale? Whatever it is. All right, if I can smash that, cool. But getting into a habit of things like parry down tilt, parry jab, parry up tilt, especially on those falling aerials, right? Because when's like say like uh I don't know, if Wolf is, like, nearing on top of you, right? Uh, and you parry it when he's high, it's going to kill your Pikmin on startup, probably. Um, but an up tilt's going to win, and that's going to pop him up. And that might not necessarily uh, net a true combo with an up air, but it does put them in a spot where maybe you can juggle them, you can frame trap them. But getting into that, if anything, discourages them, right? You want to discourage them from, from mashing as much, Absolutely. or maybe make them hesitate. And that will feed into that control aspect you're trying to maintain, because when they're in their rhythm when you're letting them do it all the time it's gonna be an absolute nightmare appreciate the uh the resub kirby you, you're more than welcome to to join in oh, here. You hi, don't have hi, to, i'm you sorry you i didn't realize you were here yeah you don't have to there's not really like a talking stick so you know a general <laughs> uh rhythm you know just if, if you want to interject maybe say something we'll usually get to I think there is something all of our, regarding out of shield there's something that we can do and i remember share zone i talked about it but it does take a bit of practice. Uh, all of our footstool down air out of shield just gets him out of everything a lot of the time. It hits every character, and also uh, it's frame three. So if people don't space well, which as all of our, you can his ground speed is decent, so you can kind of just like you can overshoot shield a lot of the time, and it can lead to a lot of situations where you can get it. So it's just something that we haven't looked at yet, and again, it hits every character, it gets you out of things. It's really nice, and it's so, something that I like might want to try and work so on too. I have a question. You said it's frame three, because yes. the squad is. But is that? Can you if like, <clears throat> say I'm fighting Palutena and she like back here with my shield kind of poorly or whatever, right? If I jump <clears throat> on the first uh, frame, I'm in the air. Can I already footstool? Don't I have to be like above their head, or is it still going to register the footstool from the the bottom of uh, or the beginning of Olmar's jump height? Because he's rising through the air relatively slowly. Uh. It depends. It depends on where she's positioned. I uh, well, I think it's probably like frame four or something. Dado, but yeah, it depends Dado on where says... she's positioned. Cause, and also the it depends on like the uh, every character has a different kind of distance yeah. from where they can actually do the uh, do the footstool. Like, for example, for Steve, yeah. it's a lot easier than other characters because this is bigger. Plus, his jumps yeah. is very small. Uh, Dado King just said footstool out of shield of frame five or slower on most characters, and that you have to be able to okay. jump, which makes sense. Um, it definitely mm -hmm. is something that could come into play. Uh, it doesn't, it, it's not a, a perfect solution for every character, but I do agree that that's something that could help, especially, <clears throat> sorry for my, <clears throat> clearing my throat all the time, can I help that? Um, I think for characters where if you're running in, I think, uh, and you know, you're messing up their spacing, you're compromising it, like a sortie, right? Like yeah, you've seen the fairs or bears, you run in, shield it, maybe you could do it there. 
<clears throat> but for something like Mario, it's going to lose that value because they're going to nail you, they're going to up air you frame two, and they're already jabbing. You're just too slow. Uh, well, keep in mind with Mario, um, a lot of the time, a lot of the time they do it a bit higher because then they can get the late neutral air. Then they can get the late neutral air, and that's the thing that combos. And because of the fact that they're going for the late neutral air a lot of the time, uh, you can get... It's not going to be minus two. It'll be like minus six. And would that it, can get you... Wouldn't late neutral air be safer because it's later toward the end of the hitbox? Yes, but it hits you at the top of your shield. Oh, you're saying he's trying to hit... Okay, I get what you're saying now. <laughs> yeah, it's similar to Fox. Like, you know how a lot of Fox players, they'll do like... Yeah, high uh, yeah, they'll do the high nair. Mario's do that too because yeah. it's uh, it gives similar confirmed. Sometimes they'll mix up and do like the low one. And the thing is, if they do the low one, unless you're at, like almost zero percent, it doesn't combo in anything. So it's still something you can go for. Yeah, that could definitely help with nair. Back air is a bit of a problem, just because uh, it's also back air, minus two or three. Gotta play that. <laughs> <laughs> it's parry. It, it, it literally you you parry back air, they're getting up tilted. Um, if you do. I know what I know what. Uh, thirty four or candle does is they they stuff out their back air before it comes out with yeah. up smash. You can definitely if you can catch them, but I'm saying once they're already hitting your shield, what is the or when when they're going to hit your shield? Once you've kind of uh, accepted that's going to happen, what is what is the best course of action? And sometimes like I think it's okay to accept you just don't have an option, right? Like it's take that hit yeah. or shield that hit. And what are they doing after? And if Mario is doing a tilt on your shield, he should be getting punished. If Mario is jumping again. There's an opening there to intercept him. So identifying digital patterns in their gameplay is going to be an important thing. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, no, I, I think flip spot of shield is something that could be played around with more. Um, it's just, I don't do it because it's awkward, I, admittedly. Like I've done some stuff sometimes, but it's such a, it, it's not my first thought when someone's hitting my shield because you do have to be right next to them a lot of the time to really get the most out of it. Because with Olimar, a lot of the time your openings are very frame tight. It's like, how fast am I in relation to them or what are they doing? Or can I get that out of there? Um, so it's not something I've personally I think, done too much, but I think... I think it's something, like, I learned this from Steve players, honestly. So, like, if you notice, like, they're they're in a similar state as us where our character is really, really slow. But a lot of the time what they do is they'll purposely position themselves close to you so that if you land on their shield, they can get their foot stolen anvil or something. Like, there's obviously kills, but, like... It's still something to be aware of because, like, they they have the same issue as we do with their with their speed, uh, more so even because Steve is a lot slower. Yeah, I can I see what you're saying, but that but but that people also tend to respect Steve when he gets near them because like they they can kind of do that. Like if it if Steve comes to you with an aerial, he's coming to you with an aerial or something like that. You have mm -hmm. to respect like Diamond back here, and he might be slower, but his move is just better. Um. Than, than like purple or back air even right yeah the way, the way the way they're the way the two characters function are just very different i, I well. think like even priority um i mean again it's just a case of what i'm saying is we can learn something from what other characters do oh yeah sure. i i am fully supportive i would love to see uh an, an accurately implemented strategy for it i'm not i don't, yeah, don't want to make it sound like i'm kind of downplaying the idea or anything um it's just you're gonna have to retool the idea because you always can't do that with omar but it, it does have some value in there um, so it's going to be finding ways to do it. Um, but yeah, I think the killing thing is definitely the biggest thing because it's one of those things where, like, Sour Spot Dare is not going to kill anyone, uh, at least at, like, lower percents. But it is a good get-off-me option if you find them doing it. <clears throat> no, yeah, and that's the point. It puts them yeah. at an angle uh, where actually, like, Olimar's fine. Like, they literally guess them off of you and it lets you reset the positions that are favorable yeah. for you, which is always nice to have. Is Are those... Uh... Uh, footstool down or something you I know because you mentioned talking about it, but have you implemented it at all? Uh, I'm not great at footstooling out of shield yet, it's something that I'm practicing, gotcha. but gotcha. But I know in situations where I have got it, like Olimar kind of just gets out for free, okay? That and I know Sherzo tested it too, and he also said Olimar basically gets out for free, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if things are aligned up appropriately and things like that, I can see it. I mean. <clears throat> that is the nice thing about footstools is that they're pretty universal in terms of, of startup and things like that. It's just a matter of the movement speed and getting there. Um, okay. I don't know. I guess moving on, I don't know who else is joining, if anyone. Like, the buzz should be here in about 10 minutes, assuming he doesn't uh, waste time. Um, I think something we were talking about earlier in, in the, the channel was uh, kind of that ledge play aspect. Um... Yes. I want to try to not get too heavy into it because I have a feeling the buzz is going to come in here and want to talk about it again, and I don't really want to waste time rehashing stuff. Um, so that's something... I'm just going to spitball ideas. We could talk about it, uh, if that's fine. Uh, the ledge play stuff, 
Um, I think there is a a large uh, issue with Ol every Olimar player I've ever seen, including me. Um, we have got to identify how to not give away our leads because we all have this problem where sometimes we'll be cooking a little too hard. And I think we think it's okay to keep going. And we just need to respect that it's not worth it because that leads to a lot of reversals. Like I was watching Shuton uh, most recently. I can't remember what tournament it was. It might've been, um, might've been Scuff World Tour. Uh, and I was watching. I know there are a lot of situations where you overcommitted against Tweak. And you I, I was forward. watching him and I was like, literally go away, play into your strength. Right. And I get it. It feels good. You get that hit and you want to push it, but it's so easy to get reversaled. And the, the problem of it comes, I think the reason we're all kind of inconsistent with it is because Olimar tends to, when you miss, you feel that miss a lot more than if you're like, you know, a fast character or something and you whip something, you really notice it. But a lot of the time to get your strong hits, you have to be on somebody, right? Like a tip or F smash doesn't do it. A, a space forward, like you need to get that back in there, that sweet spot attack. Um, So it's very committal, but you're having to play this constant balancing act of like, do I do I consistently push advantage and approach, or do I reset over and over and over again and give away, right? Give them an opportunity to do it, and that's something that I tried to figure out. And I was talking to someone about the hero matchup because you know there's a hero player in my area, and I was explaining to them like, oh yeah, it's really tough. I try to reset, or I I tried to constantly push my advantage state there, and like you just have to reset, you just have to reset, uh, you know, and just and just stop play them again. But it's like, at what point do you go? Well, I'm doing this too much. They're going to get in eventually. I'm going to make a mistake soon enough. And then I potentially lose off of one, you know, bad interaction. So I don't know if either of you two, I would love to hear it, have have um, identified ways to where you feel more comfortable kind of overstepping that advantage boundary or maybe on doing the opposite end and kind of uh, retreating back into it. I have the opposite oh. problem. I tend to not overcommit. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you think, though, that that will leave you in a similar spot though where because you don't overcommit you know you're like well they eventually get to me and i lose what happens with me a lot of the time is i just kind of win neutral over and over again this is literally against everyone it happens to me against net it happens to me against icon etc um where i just keep playing neutral over and over and over again but because of that i can never kill at an er like at a reasonable percent and then they hit me once and they're max rage and i die <laughs> Fair. That's not kind of an issue with all of our in general. That will just happen. It is, and but it's something that needs to be addressed to consistently push yourself. Like if you look at a lot of the other uh, viable characters or, or, or successful players, what they do is either when they reset, they go back to neutral. They're gonna kill you off hit. That's why characters like Kazia and Steve are so, or, or even Fox. Right? They hit you once. They open you up, and now you're in this vortex of, of endless damage. Olimar doesn't do that. He gets you typically more short, concise burst. Lots of damage, and then he controls a, a, a state of advantage, but it's not actual advantage. He's not, like, following up frame trapping. He's more like, hey, I'm here, and you're maybe losing stage control. And then on the other end, you have characters like uh, Sonic. You have characters like... I, honestly, Diddy feels like he's becoming more prevalent with players like Aaron doing well. You obviously have Tweak always on the stage up there with him. Who are Those two characters are very good at escaping. They go, I don't want to deal with this. Or Pyromithra going, all right, I'm, I'm Mithra, and I'm going to run away from you. I'm going to get away. I'm going to throw a big hitbox and get away. Olimar doesn't really fit into either of those. So we have to be able to constantly shift like a pendulum on like aggressive defense, aggressive defense, aggressive defense, but it doesn't ever feel like it's consistent enough. I think one of the reasons that Shuton tends to be the most, uh, I don't want to say successful, but effective in certain matchups and players um, with Olimar is because one, players respect him way too much in my opinion. Like he just it instills fear in people. Um, and two, he's extremely good at calling people out for trying to intercept him. I think that's one of his biggest strengths as a player. But you can't magically replicate that as someone else, right? If I fight one of you, I'm going to treat you differently than I would if I fought Shuton, right? So there, you can't assume that that's going to come into play. So how can we maybe reinforce our gameplay to where it's consistently benefiting us, right? Is there maybe a way to identify these different, like, now I need to pull in or now's the time to push out, maybe depending on certain character attributes that we're fighting, like, how much resources do they have? What percent do they have? What's the clock? So if you guys have any ideas on that, I would be, uh, I would love to hear it. So like, just on, like, trying to push our advantage state more, pretty much? <clears throat> Sorry, I wasn't here for, like, half of what No, you're said. good. I I, 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 yeah. the, the specific thing here is, like, understanding, you know, 
is it how how much should we put be pushing advantage to where you know it's effective but not too far to where we go oops i tried to down into this one thing and now i'm at the legend there on stage you know you have to walk this fine line of not going too far or you run the risk of getting reversal or shifting the the gameplay dynamic to now you're in disadvantage uh but also like just Go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, but also on the other end, not playing so defensive that you never get the kill, like what Kirby was saying, where, you know, they'll just play neutral over and over again, and they won't get a kill, and they'll get raged back aired at 50 and die, right? Because there needs to be a middle ground so that you can shift seamlessly between that, and I think there are players that do that, but how do we make that as consistent as possible? One thing I've liked to do a lot, especially after trying to learn Simon for my own, you know, fun, it's like I try and not I, I don't go off stage as Olimar that much, but I really like to ledge trap. So, like, let's say I'm on ledge right here with two purples. I run off side B, try and ledge trump into, like, a down air. Or I sit on ledge, try and hit the, like, the, the corner of the ledge with the purple side B, and then run up bear or something like that. Or I feel like it lets us play safe enough where you're not, like, throwing yourself off stage, potentially dying because Olimar. But instead, it lets you, like, keep your advantage state while also not, like, potentially dying as hard. Like, yeah, you're still on ledge if they reverse you. Still kind of sucks. But, like, you still have, like, a purple on you, for example, where, like, if you get hit off stage, you might lose both of them just because they disconnect from him. Okay. Maybe something that, uh, like, you talked about just getting reversed in general, like, when you take risk. Yeah. Maybe, uh... Do you usually, like, retreat to ledge or go high, like, after you get, like, reversed on? Are, are you saying, it, like, that's something I do, or are you asking? Uh, well, like, I was just more of, because what I like to do, sometimes if I get reversal, is I just say, fuck the ledge, I'm going high, and just try and throw it hitboxes to force my way down. That's what I usually do, is if I get reversed, if I, like, if I can't figure out a way to, like, reasonably evaluate risk reward in the matchup, and I do end up getting reversal, I'm just like, okay, I'm just going to do that. Do you find that works consistently for you? Uh, usually, yeah. Against some characters, obviously, like Palu, uh, Covering High isn't viable, yeah, really. Yeah, you gotta watch. It's it's gonna change on a character-to-character -character basis. So yeah. I think there, there's time for going high. And I know you guys like to clown me for going high so often, but I'll keep doing it. Um, no, I, I yeah, I agree. There, There's definitely a time and place um, for that. Do you think... I think this is something else I got from watching Shuton. Um Honestly, this is also something we can ask MFA. MFA is really good at knowing when to extend versus reset. Um, but something Shutan does that actually no other Olimar does is first he'll... Okay, I think this is a benefit of him also, like, commenting Pyramithra because he kind of does stuff with her. Like, he does stuff with Olimar that I think he took from Pyramithra. But what he likes to do is he'll do, like, what... Uh, he'll do what other characters do while he'll run off stage to kind of bait something yeah. and then jump back. Or what will happen is with the purple... He'll jump off stage with the purple to kind of like, and he'll chase it. And what will happen is it kind of baits, it forces the opponent to do something a lot of the time to deal with the purple. And it puts the, and it puts you in a really good reactionary position to hit them. Okay. And put them in an even worse position or even kill them. And it's kind of like treating purple Pikmin when you're chasing it off stage as like peak attigial in a way and kind of like chasing it in that manner. Like it's something you don't do it. Does. Huh? But you like don't commit to the chase. You like just yeah, bait it just pretty much. It, yeah. Yeah, it's like it's like the whole you're diagonal with the purple Pikmin. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's yeah. That and it's something sense. only Shuton does. Okay. Yeah. No, that definitely makes sense. Uh, how do you? And I... Go off. Oh, no, no, you're fine. Go on. Um, I was. It's also something a lot of alarmers need to get better, including myself, is just evaluating risk reward and when it's worth it. Because I felt like for a long time in the old meta, we could just kind of get away with a lot of, like, overextensions and, like, taking more risk. But now we really can't because people have gotten a lot better at their punish game. It's... Care is the meta, favor, heavy cover your punish game as well. I No, I agree. And I, I think... And reward reversals a lot um, and stuff like that. So we all have different uh, metas here. What's up? Astronauts? Um astronauts? We all have different uh, uh, opponents we face consistently and things like that. And I think the Buzz might be able to... Uh, he might agree with me on this one potentially is so uh an example of so one reason why maybe i would overextend a little too much is say i'm fighting someone like light and this guy i if you have never played light i cannot accurately describe how frustrating it is because you're fighting someone who feels like they're a robot in terms of reaction with um insane frame meter right so when you knock him off stage you're like okay well i need to kill him or i need to put him in a spot where he's not going to survive so you go out there to engage with him 
because you're like, if I reset, I'm now already at a disadvantage, right? Playing neutral against Fox does not feel good when it's someone who's that effective at fighting you. So what what it turns into is you go out there and you try and hit him, maybe down air, down smash, down tilt, whatever it is, intercept him on side B or up B. It sometimes works, sometimes it doesn't. But do you think, uh, and this is open to anyone who, who, who's here, do you think like if you're fighting someone who's consistently giving you trouble in neutral or can get so much off of those single hits, is it worth to maybe try and force that overextension when they're off stage to make it work, right? Because if it's someone who's more tame and you're okay in neutral, but against a player like that with his character, I feel like if I don't capitalize there, my chances of winning have gone down again. Like every time I fail, the, the chance of me winning that game is going down. But it's like, I can get him there, but he, you know, the, the player's ad adapting well or whatever it is. I need to find a way to close that out now. And I don't know if it's a consistency issue in me timing my attacks correctly on his ledge snap or his, you know, uh, uh, arrival at the ledge or what it is. But I don't, the risk feels necessary. Can I just I'm say, wondering if you're streaming uh, World of Warcraft right now on Twitch. Oh, my bad. I thought I changed the game. Appreciate that. I love talking about World of Warcraft and, and the Hogate Radio. <laughs> now. All right, bye. Um, when I played... Oh, sorry. No, no, you're, you're, you're good, you're good, you're good. When I played light, it felt really frustrating because of the amount of discipline I had to have in order to, like, just get a hit on him. Yes. Against a lot of players, I'll just, like, swing, and it'll usually hit him at one point or another, and then I can get a punish. And But against light, I had to, like, actively discipline myself to, like, not do that. You... I had to, like, play super patient and play super chill heavy and take notes of when he was, like, going to Tala hop me and stuff like that yeah you can't outreact him so swinging prematurely with the intention of like i think this will hit or run into it doesn't work you have to like you were saying take notes of his habits and go he's going to approach now or i'm gonna put this out and maybe bait him out um because in the end and since you know you've played him you understand it's like you you feel like you need to when you hit him it has to matter because yeah, it had like you can't just uh like take get no. one hit and then back off you can't really do that and that's because you doing that over and over you're gonna lose that's that's the problem i run into you know, when I'm playing Olmar consistently, where it's like these characters who we fight, it's like we can out neutral them all day, but we're losing off of so much fewer interactions. So we have to either find a way to deny them those interactions, which is a totally different way to approach it, which could be equally as viable if we can find a way to maybe develop that game, uh, or we have to kill them more. And I just don't know the way to do that. It really is really hard in this current meta, just because of how, like, the, the insane risk reward on a lot of rules in this game. But I think you just have to, like, thread the needle so many, a lot of times. Yeah. Like, uh, over and over again. I feel like Which I think I, is doable, but it's really hard. I feel like I'm ringing the same bell over and over again, but, like, I think Shuton is a good person to look at even when fighting Fox. Because, like... He doesn't even go at, uh, all over against Fox, I thought. No, he does. Oh, he does? Did, who, did, yeah. did, did he, did he, did he or something? fight light recently? I could be misremembering. Hold on. I think he played it recently, but almost every time he fights Fox, he wins. And the thing is, he does what you talk about with regards to kind of like catching, uh, catching Fox kind of like off stage a lot of the time. What he does a lot of the time is he basically kind of waits. Someone just told he me he waits for Fox shot. to kind of come into an option because he has to. In those situations, and then that's when he reacts and kind of punishes. Like he normally like holds himself at ledge kind of to kind of see like, hey, hey, is Fox going to? I mean, it's the obvious thing, right? Because Fox's recovery is like. And he can go high, obviously, but that's the thing. He positions himself at ledge to kind of force Fox to do something. If he goes high, he has to kind of chases him and, throw, and like, resets the situation over and over again. Yeah. I think that's just something Shuton's good at, honestly. Okay. Do you think that's something that you can replicate in your play, though? Like, because we all have our own unique flares we bring to the table with Olimar in our strengths. And there's definitely va uh, um, value to trying to emulate certain strategies. But is it something that if you were to emulate it, do you feel like you can consistently understand why it's working? Are you doing it because you see it work and you're just going for it? Because I think that is a, a something that needs to be maybe defined better. How do we understand these situations better to replicate them? I think it's more, I guess, to clarify, Shuton puts himself in a lot of situ in a lot of reactionary situations that benefit him. I think that's the best way to put it. And that's something that like okay. honestly a lot of Olimars in general need to work on. Yeah, yeah. I also think another thing in general is like it's just playing more reactionary rather than like just swinging and hoping it hits someone. Since that, whenever I fight Tweak, I feel that because I have to actually react to his shit. I can't just throw out hitboxes and one of them's gonna hit you him. alive. He is going to punish he me for that. He will eat you alive. It's it, you know, like we were saying with Light earlier. He, they, they, these players, and you know that that is the upper echelon for a reason. They will eat you alive if you're throwing out attacks poorly. You have to play defensive reactionary. 
so that you can uh, engage with them and disengage when you need to. And then when you're up close, you can kind of go for your bread and butter autopilot. I hit them, I already know where they're going to go type of deal. Um, but it's so hard with Olimar because even when you react, because of the game's natural input delay and things like that, and his middle middle of the road frame data, you're just too slow sometimes. There's also a lack of mobility. Because I'll be out of, like, I'll know, I'll react to something. Like, if Palu's going to back air me, I'll try and get below them. But yeah. I just can't because of how slow I am. Yeah. In, in, in the air. There's times where I'll, I'll whistle something, and I literally, they just fall faster than me. There's no, there's no punish. Um, yeah. And identifying that's important. But, I, I, the buzz, I would love to hear your thoughts on this. I mean, I'm kind of just listening, and because I don't know where to go with this character, I feel like I feel like what I'm hearing is everyone's kind of just saying we need to push advantage state better, and the way we do it is put ourselves in the better spots, right? So, well, I think that is a fair sentiment. I think the follow-up question is something more specific than just better spots. Like, okay, yeah. you know, we want edgeguard someone, right? What's a good spot with edgeguard? Is it good to wait for them to covering over a downer or down to a two-frame? I think maybe in some matchups. Is it good to go off and try to fair them aggressively? I think I've had good success with that lately um, when juggling. You know, where do we position ourselves for the juggling? Do you want to just juggle mid screen with up bears? No, you want platforms. In that case, where in the platform do we position ourselves to cover as many things as possible and not create reversal? Um, are we losing? And you guys said, oh, I, like with Olimar, take a lot of damage, die. Question is, is it because you get hit with Olimar or is it because you're getting hit with specific things as Olimar, right? Like, I don't care if I get by rising aerial for most characters. But if some hit characters with a falling aerial, that's when I care more, right? So we got to get. Okay, specifics. Specifically. specifically yeah. uh, like, where the about something I mentioned there? earlier, I think you didn't join for this yet, but I, this is why I said I hate ringing the same bell with Shuton, but this is like something Shuton does specifically in advantage a lot of the time is with purples. He'll, you know how Pikachu's, they'll toss T and then they'll kind of chase it in a diagonal angle? Shuton does that with Pikmin, with purple Pikmin uh, when they're off stage to force them to do something about it, and then he kind of just reacts and punishes them for it. Yeah, I, that's pretty standard, right? Yeah, just a lot of people aren't doing that. <laughs> I've been doing that. There, I mean... Oh. No, no, no. Uh, go on. Uh, I mean, I think that, like, the, a thing that a lot of Olimars need to work on is, like, conditioning with risk, I feel like. Mm -hmm. Can you and, like, have the, trying uh, to find a good balance between, like, overextending on a hit to try and kill them, or just backing off and trying to reset neutral, or something like that. So, I agree with that, but we get to the same uh, problem that DeBuzz just said, where we're speaking in general terms. We need specifics, and it's going to change from matchup to matchup, but it's like, do we need to make an effort, either collectively as a community or, or on your own player level, to go, I'm fighting Fox. You know, develop scenarios where this is what I do versus Fox. This is when I retreat, right? Maybe I hit him at this angle. I respect that he can come down with a hitbox there, or he can come up with a hitbox and I can't do it, right? Because Olimar maybe struggles with diagonals. Think him dropping down, rising with fair from the ledge, right? Hits you awkwardly. Uh, because if we speak in general terms, we could go, all right, yeah, I do need to do need to be better here all day, but it's not like a one size. You're not. It's not really gonna help. Oh, wait, that reminds me. Everyone. That brings up the other idea I brought up, uh, and this goes with what the buzz was saying. Um. So, uh, the buzz. one thing that you mentioned was how uh, one thing that we need to recognize is one, a lot of the time we get hit by that causes these certain situations, and a lot of the time it's, like, these really fast, safe moves that, like, a lot of the time are sex kicks, honestly. And, like, for example, Mario Neutral Air, we have 10 Neutral Air, we have, I don't know, a lot of sex kick Neutral Airs, um, Cloud Back Air, etc. Um... So I think something Sherzo and I talked about this. I I brought it up like right when I joined, but like footstool down air out of shield with Olimar just gets them off you. And specifically with um, and specifically with characters like Fox, like Mario, like uh, even Link, a lot of the time they want to go for the late hit because that's the one that combos. And so a lot of the time they're hitting the top of your shield, which is like minus six instead of like minus two. Which puts you in a better position to do, and that's something Steve players do. Uh, I actually just realized something. Um, so if they're hitting the top of your shield, would you have to delay your jump slightly to make sure that you're not jumping before they hit the ground, so that's aligning with the uh, the the footstool properly? Uh, I don't know. Do you see Again, what I'm, saying? I'm pretty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I... Again, something we need to practice, though. Yeah, it, it's just uh, something I thought of because you mentioned again, like the late hit at the top of your shield. Because that was something someone told me really early on in Ultimate. I was like, you know, when you would parry and up smash, I'd be like, well, delay your up smash out of the parry. And I was like, all right, yeah, I'll wait three frames every time, you know. But that that is something where 
it could be one of those going back to the reactionary aspect of it going, they're doing this option this way, react to it, go, now I down it, right? Adding that to your repertoire of options when you're going to get and having to notice in the moment consistently. Um, it's like if you like are specifically looking to run up to someone's sex snare, like you, sex snare, like instead of like you know, there you, one there? Sure, like, you like run up in their face shield. No, you can't punish that shield, but you know you're looking for the foot slash shield instead. Mm -hmm. So like that's kind of thing, like, like using that as like a, and like that's more specific things we're talking about. Right? Like how do we like cover the situation with lingering hit nares? Well, we run up and we look for out of shield footstool by getting in their face. Mm -hmm. and that works. The buzz. How do you feel? about uh kind of in the same out of shield talk how do you feel about consist not consistently trying to parry but adding that as like a, i'm confident in my openings here because i was mentioning earlier how we need to get into a habit to parry up tilt parry jab especially up tilt it's just really awkward so a lot of people will do it myself included consistently but parry up tilt it, even if you don't always combo it will hit pretty much anything on parry if they're on top of you i would just do parry and jab to be honest or parry like smash attack um i the thing about parrying is i think it's really good Versus falling areas, rising areas, you're yeah. not parrying them reliably. You don't need to. Yeah. But I definitely find myself a lot trying to go for parries on falling aerials. Um, and it really depends on the character if it's successful. So or the playing a, easy. playing a fox is not so easy. The reason I said up tilt was because jab and down tilt can definitely work if they're in front of you or if you know exactly what side they'll be on. But when they're doing like, let's say, uh, you know, fox is doing that that classic soft and air he likes to do where you, you barely move. He's usually hitting that a bit later. He's falling with it. If you parry it, he's above you. Jab might miss. Whereas up tilt's going to catch right above him, as well as it being frame six, so it's going to be faster than smash attack. You don't have to worry about your Pikmin dying. And it kind of, it's going to hit him up. I think jab is usually ideal just because of the way it'll send them in the frame data. But the up tilt gives you kind of, it removes some of that ambiguity. It's like, I, I don't need them to be right in front of me. If they're, if they're on me, I'm up tilting them. Hmm... Yeah, but parry up tilt i mean i don't know if you guys play with tap jump it can be a little awkward but if you don't have tap jump it's pretty easy to just let it rip real quick i'd imagine and also like up tilt puts them in a pretty awkward spot it puts them in the same angle as it, like or the same area that up smash does it's just you can't combo off it as as easy yeah so you might have to go for a frame trap there are some combo especially if you're picking on them but even just putting them back in a different spot maybe discouraging them from mashing uh, an attack on the way down that'll buy you more time to find a new better solution to beat them yeah like also with, another with thing myron, sorry oh, sorry go ahead wait with what myron just said i feel like even if you hit just the up tilt you're still putting them in such a bad spot like with a uh, fox up throw for example it's not you're not comboing off of it but he's juggling you so well i feel like you could do something similar especially with olimar like yellow up smash or purple up smash or uh, up air sorry where you're forcing them to do something really defensive, and then they might not get out of that situation. Meanwhile, you could have done something else out of it and not get the same reward. Where I don't think I've seen people go for that option compared to something with, like, like what I just mentioned, middling rewards. Basically, just getting greedier with the options, is what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to work on that a little. Yeah, definitely just, like, being greedy. Like, especially with Olimar, there's times where it's, like, you know, is it worth hitting with an aerial if it's not going to kill? Probably not. When you can maybe go for like a killing aerial instead, like should I probe up there, mid, up air, mid screen, hundred? No, should I probe back at him? Yeah, that might kill a bad DI type of thing. Or should I bother anti-airing them with a uh, down tilt at 120? No, not really. Either I kill him with the move, or I just I, don't connect with you. I can agree with that. I know personally there are times where I'll just go for the comfortable option or what I want to work or what I know will hit easier than what I should do because. When, when it gets down to doing, like, the more specific or just, uh, strict timing on something or spacing or whatever where you don't know if it'll work, you, you almost want the security and going for the easy option. Uh, and, and there's probably some level of, like, autopilot in there, too. Like, I'll parry, rip a smash attack because, you know, I'm registering that I want this parry, but I'm not... I'm, I'm kind of relinquishing control on what I do next. I'm just letting the... the All right, I'll play my game here. I want a big punish. But it's like, no, sometimes you have to go for the, the you know, less reward now, more reward later type of play. Um, mm -hmm. And maybe that just means, because uh, with Olimar, you already have that kind of heightened awareness when you're playing. Maybe that means you just need to be even more focused on every single interaction. And it's draining to do that. But against certain characters, like Fox, like a Mario, who have those really crazy frame betas, it, you might just, it might demand more of you consistently. Uh, where you have to hold yourself to that level of, of accountability in your gameplay, and you don't get to let up. Because against something like a Samus, like, whatever. <laughs> You know, but yeah. it's it's when you're fighting these other characters, 
Uh, I was just practicing against a Terry the other day online, and it was it, it's Terry online, so it's already going to be a super scuffed uh, matchup anyways. But it was just like, you have to just, every single thing you do needs to be on point. And I don't know if this is something you all struggle with, but I tend to definitely get a lot of mental frustration in there, you know, maybe a sense of entitlement develops or whatever, and that can hamp, uh, dampen my ability to stay focused and, and consistently stick to game plans. And I think that may be why I, I get a little too greedy in certain interactions as well. Um, but that I definitely agree with that, especially with me, with my focusing issues with ADHD and all that. It can be very frustrating getting hit for something like you parry cloud up smash, you up smash, and then he hits you anyways. Yeah. Something like that. It, I don't think should happen in a game like this, and then I'll just spiral downward. Yeah, you, you. I think not. Not just with me. I feel like a lot of people need to work on that. You always, especially with this character. Um, you always want to fight off the what ifs if you can, but moving forward as as you consistently play higher, higher in level uh, players with Olimar, and you get to the top. Like, if you want to perform well, and you're planning on playing the character in a high frequency, you need to be putting in more effort in those areas because i think that kind of controlled level of gameplay will go a lot farther and it, it will probably help influence your understanding of like do i need to press do i need to force something off stage here do i need to try and do it um or should i just disengage because i'm confident and I, I recognize that um the way i'm playing right now i can consistently outplay him in that um but it, it also goes into like, are you counterpicking? You know, someone like DeBuzz is not playing Olimar an entire turn, and then he he's doing it dependent on what matchup he's in. So whereas Rosa has her own issues, it might be like you might benefit from just I'm gonna practice Olimar against the foxes or against the whatevers, and I'm gonna do a lot of specific training to make sure that I have. You're like building your autopilot up to already have these options queued up, but it's like a higher tier of autopilot. Like you're you're giving it more thought in each autopilot thing, but you're preparing yourself to like. I parried that Nair. He's getting up till today. I already know. I've, I've trained these responses. So it's like more than you would normally. It's not your, your average autopilot that you would have with the character. I want to... <clears throat> I want to steer this conversation in a different direction for a moment. Sure. And that is, instead of... Well, I think all these things are correct. Um, I think all these things are very, like... They're very fundamental, right? And I think working on fundamentals is fine. I think it's good. But... It's something everyone can work on to their own extent um, in different ways. And I'm wondering, is there more character-specific things we can do that are particularly strong, right? Like, you know, is there more... I want to bring that up as well, especially with, like, the, pl the Buzz playing Rosa, where it's like, yeah, you do need a lot of character-specific, well, character-specific, but a lot of text to make your character-specific functions, like Luma, work a lot better. I feel like you can do a lot of the same things to make Pikmin function a lot better. Yeah, like, are there, like, you know, pressure angles, like, Pikmin toss we're not thinking about? Like, I've been messing around a little more lately with, like, full-out purple to stop someone jumping to a platform in neutral. And then I... Oh, I started doing that. It's so useful. Yeah, right, and, like, things like that. Like, are there more things, like, oh, we could throw Pikmin here, or maybe, like, this covers this thing, or maybe this is a good chance for attack. Maybe... I'm using a lot more up B around platforms lately, right? Just literally like up B to platform. You saw me there, right? And I started using it just like up being the platforms constantly. Even just like I like full up around platforms, up B land on it type of stuff. And I'm like it's wondering like what else we have there with the character, right? Or like I landed like a down tilt downer recently and I was like, wait, sure. I should do down tilt downer. Wait, the down tilt downer frame type you just found out about that? On like big bodies, down tilt downer oh, yeah. is really good. Oh, on big bodies, yeah. Do you um... something I've oh, go on. Oh. No, no, you're good. Go on. Something I've been starting to do recently to deal with Olimar's poor disadvantage is to also mix in there off with getting off ledge because people never expect fucking multi hits from Olimar, oh. and so they'll just shield and then I'll nair and then I can even cross up the direction I want to go in, so it can be really useful. I kind of treat it like I'm like I'm worse Rob Nair, I guess. Well, it's not it's not covering the same role as Rob Nair. It's more like well, like. Uh, I know, but it, ha it has a similar purpose. I would say more like Rob's side me from the ledge, where you'll try and, like, drop shield to do something early, not counting the hits, because most people don't count the five hits of Olimar's Nair. You mean, like, um, Palin Nair? <laughs> Palin Nair, that's a good, that's a good indicator. Yeah, kind of. Um, no, that, that is a fantastic option. Um, and, like, when you start mixing that in with, like, get-up attack, uh, roll, and all the other ledge options, it becomes... If ledge trap and lumber becomes a lot harder when you just throw in one other option that you can do it at any time, because it forces people... 
Exactly. Something I've found a lot of success with in some cases too is so, you know, maybe you've been playing someone and you've been on the ledge a few times and you've either attacked with fair, side B, up air, nair, whatever it is. You can just straight up air dodge past them sometimes. It's it's disgustingly effective. That or you'll up B into them, right? Like you'll be up being at them, maybe you have one or, or like a low amount of pigments, you have some ability, and you up B around them and they're like, oh, they're gonna attack, and then you just fly past them. Because they're waiting to let you commit first, typically, and then punish you. But if you go past them, they're in shield, they're in whatever, they can't always get a direct punish. And I found that uh, that additional mix-up as well, it can, it's like that additional option you were saying, right? Where they're just, like, not ready for it. Um, so it might be, I think, if, if that's not something you guys have ex explored, uh, just doing nothing <laughs> and going past them is extremely effective. It's funny, we had this conversation, like... Well, not too long ago, Myron, about like, doing exactly that. I started doing it. It's just super effective. Yeah. Um, but yeah. On, on the topic of, of Olimar, um, specific things, I, how do you guys feel about actively using yellows more? Like, so we all know yellows are really good at what they do, but I think the range they bring to the table is not something we can ignore as a way to maybe consistently intercept people in neutral, press advantage. Uh, it, it kind of does it all. Uh, because their hitboxes are so, so massive. <laughs> That's my big thing. Is like in neutral is kind of hard, but for ledge trapping, I always try to have a yellow. What I've actually been messing with as well. Uh, I'll go like yellow at the second, but just throw those out there for later. I've been messing around more with using blues specifically because they can tank hits well. Okay. So like a lot of times I'm fishing the land of blue side being someone knowing that one hit's not going to kill it. A lot of times I need two, and that's much more annoying to deal with. Yeah. That's that's smart. Who's had the most HP out of like any of the uh, outside purple? Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. I, yeah, I, yeah. I I've had similar thoughts with um like parry up smash with blues because I know they can tank additional hits whereas other colors might die. Um, but I never thought about it in the context of like just for side B getting more out of that. So that's really smart. Um, and because we all have like our individual uh management styles in terms of Pikmin, but I think maybe developing uh more like certain matchups should call for certain colors more often would help play into their strengths because someone like uh fox or someone you know might have a harder time getting that blue off than like lucina where it doesn't have much value i've been finding i don't really like yellow side b because it doesn't go that far so i find myself a lot of times i have yellow pikmin unless i'm answering with side b of course i'm just literally using an, an aerial to get the, the yellow pikmin behind my lineup so i can get something else for the side b I think um, yellow's biggest strengths, too, are going to come from, like, those space death smashes in neutral with yellow are just massive. Or catching somebody at a distance where maybe they aren't visually ready for it with, like, up smash because it's got so much horizontal range to it. Uh, I find you can catch a lot of people there. Um, or maybe get, like you said, put it in the back of your line. Maybe you get a white grab or some other grab, and then you follow up with a yellow aerial, and then you open them up that way. It's it's more of a, uh, in some matchups at least, a supplementary Pikmin that's there to bolster the rest of them and not so much lead it. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it might be important to go through and develop like certain matchups that you know you're going to be playing all in for anyone who, who might be co uh commanding or whatever and go these are lineups i want to do more right so if i'm fighting lucina maybe i want it to contest neutral if i'm fighting mario i want it to you know uh, intercept aerials and, and ledge trap if i'm fighting you know samus it's there for throwing and blocking charge shots stuff like that um because i don't know if anyone's ever really done that i kind of just manage my pikmin how i want and i know certain matchups are gonna i'm gonna want reds or whatever more but i you know i kind of just keep that to myself and i don't like publicly like here's my management preference chart on every matchup yeah of course that makes sense like like having more mm -hmm. purpose for every pikmin sounds like wobble three general it sounds like a very reasonable thing to do because it's like a more specific character based goal yeah okay yeah sometimes if i'm fighting like roy obviously i'm gonna want double purple and like yellow but a lot of the time i do find myself liking double yellow purple a lot more because I can go F smash, purple to space them out, and catch it with like yellow up smash. They try to jump in, or yellow aerial for the same effect. I, mean, I just, I find it so consistent, and I love using it. That's interesting. I guess when you do double yellow, purple, it also transitions well to uh, yellow, purple, white, yellow, or like even. Yeah, yellow. exactly. Yeah, a lot of a lot of lineups tend to lean into each other really well. So you'll have like, like you said, the or like blue, white, purple, and then now you have a red and yellow coming up for for different gameplay. But you can do a lot of damage with like the blue, white, purple. But those th that lineup tends to filter the everything but the purple out pretty quickly if you're playing aggressive with it. So it gets you into a more damage oriented lineup in terms of hitboxes as opposed to like grabs and side B. Um, but I don't I don't really think about my lineup 
that specifically when I play. Like, I know what I want, I know what I'm playing towards, but it's more so in the moment. Like, if I'm planning for a specific lineup, it's more of a gradual, slower-paced matchup. In the moment, on faster-paced matchups, it just doesn't... Like, I'll get the lineup I want, but I'm not, like... I don't give it as much thought. Like, when I'm side being, it's more so to get to my purples or my yellows or whatever I want, and not so, like, I need to throw the blue on here to do this. So that's something I could... I'm definitely going to try and implement more. Uh, and I know... We, I think we talked about this before, Debuzz, where I'm... You know, I tried to play less optimal, so to speak, in terms of, like, not always going for certain lineups or being too predictable with it, right? Making a little bit more ambiguity in there and, and fighting with what you have. Um, and that's something that uh, I think Shutan does really well with his reds. Uh, like, he'll just... I have a red and one purple. That's all I need. Um, so it might be, it might be worthwhile to kind of, uh, re-examine certain matchups where you're struggling, like, uh, whenever you guys, any of you really just, like, lose to a, uh, a, a certain character, go back and watch your bot and pay attention to, like, when you're side being, because I definitely find myself side being sometimes too much, but I just really like hitting the button, because it does a lot for me. It's, uh, it's this a, is it, it activates endorphins for us. <laughs> is there any, like, good purpose for red? Like, besides the fact that it just does decent damage. And good oh, I damage. think red kind of sucks. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> I, I'm in the same boat as you all, where I think reds are the most underwhelming but niche, but they're very good at what you do. You can hit hard with them. Uh, obviously, they're the niche matchups like Snake and stuff where they're fantastic. Their throw combos are really good. Um, but I, I just generally would rather have a purple or a, or a yellow. Yeah, I mostly keep the reds around uh, when my opponents are like, a percent where the red starts to kill barely. Yeah. Like, that's the, the range is nice on it, too. The red just barely kills. That's when it's really threatening. Uh, I like to keep them at low percents because they really open up a lot of combo windows. The thing is to keep in mind, and this is also kind of you. This is something that's cool about red. Yes, purples. Uh, yes, purples do more, and you generally want purples. But, like, if you don't have purples, keep in mind that red is, like, about as safe as purple yeah, a lot of the time. It's going to do a similar goal for everything but side B. Typically. Yeah. Um, it's just a slightly worse purple in exchange for the range, and the range is nice. Sometimes. Don't you think, though, you could argue? So, smash attacks aside, and even then, like, I think only up smash would be the one that really matters. Like, wouldn't yellow be better to have there anyway? If you're if you're more worried about safety, I guess the damage is still going to be good from red. So it's not like it's a bad it, thing to have. It them. would, but also there is the niche case. Like, oh, they're at kill percent where yellow will yeah. kill them, but like red or purple will. I'm going to treat red as a long-range purple pikmin here okay that's, that's like the only like w would you yeah, that's that's the only case i could be used over yellow there would any of you though ever actively try to get the red over the purple or do you think it would be more like i have this until i get the other color i want i i think it's only like in specific matchups like bowser or something yeah okay. yeah i think what comes down to though i think there's a lot of times where i'd actually rather have a red over a yellow in specific percent windows mm-hmm yeah. And I think that's what it comes down to a lot is like, because we always want the purple, right? Um, I feel like our second Pikmin is always like a flex Pikmin. Yeah. And then the third Pikmin is generally the, the toss Pikmin, right? So, for example, like maybe like someone's like, uh, Fox at 100. I might not want that yellow in the future. I might want to say, you know what? He's at 100. I want this purple red. And if I have the yellow, cool. But until I'm to like 120, 130, I don't, I want to keep this right because I want two Pikmin that can kill him. Yeah. It's just, I, I wonder if that's the philosophy that Shutan kind of carries. Um, because he's so, you know, he really likes to learn those back air reads and stuff like that. And it, thinking back to it, I mean, he'll play with like blue, red, purple at any percent. But you'll definitely see him make an active effort to keep a red and a purple at times. And I think maybe it adds a little extra um, mix up in there. Because with a purple, you know, like us people associate that with with danger whereas red it might not invoke that same immediate response um so that you can catch people slipping as much or maybe they don't expect it uh the additional range or whatever because when when, it, when you fight people with purple they shield all the time they you know they don't clank with it or whatever so there might be a, a mental edge you can kind of get while maintaining a, a similar level of power in there yeah exactly okay that's, what, that's just what i'm thinking no that that's honestly really good i i've been writing off red since i started playing <laughs> olimar and brawl so, I mean, they, they have always had their purpose, but I, that's a way that I never really adjusted looking at them. Um, so that's something I'll, I'll, I'll maybe actively try and play around with them a little bit more. Um, how do you also, uh, something cool as well. I'm pretty sure... I know purples have this. Uh, I think reds also have just enough, like, damage in his son to where a lot of red aerials do combo and, like, grab and stuff like that, while, like, other Pikmin don't. Like, like fair, fair grab or something? 
And yeah. That's you need to red all it's you need to red and purple a lot of the time, but it's a lot easier oh, with red. Probably. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, yeah, it's because yellows are, are the grant are the smash attack combos and you want purple and red, that would make sense for the cause they have more hit stun, but not the hit lag from yellow is it, it doesn't get applied essentially because you separate two on aerials. Mm -hmm. Um Okay, yeah, that, that adds another layer of that to them. Um so when when we're fighting uh how do I let me think about how to phrase this? When, all right, all right, I actually know what I want to say. When we're fighting characters, do you think it's worth trying to double down on the uh, consistency in landing maybe two frame punishes or ledge attack options? So if we think about it, yellows and the ledge, we realistically can hit anyone if we time it appropriately every time, either with down air, down smash, down tilt, right? Like we've got a lot of, like, or even fair and bare if you're really ballsy. Um, is it worth trying to maybe lab out those timings in like the training mode or whatever or with someone and be like oh if fox or palatina go i can react i have the q down or whatever and i always hit it and then you get your kill or do we need to play more into i have to ledge trump i have to ledge trap i have to do other things because there are a lot of times where you know i'll miss a down smash i'll miss whatever and maybe i get i get hit because i was just too slow on it but the option itself doesn't feel like a bad option to go for because it can work and it can kill uh, I think, I think I can talk a little bit about this because I watched you talk too much, and he's probably the best all of our last trapper. Um, um, basically, uh, what what Shutan does a lot is he'll he loves holding shield at ledge, as well as kind of like jumping as well, like jumping out of shield and stuff like that to kind of cover jumps and things like that. But he like won't swing there. He kind of wants to bait people to do something, and then what he does a lot of the time is he'll condition people to hold ledge. Um in those spots because he's holding shield. And in those spots, he gets a lot of less trumps for that purpose, and he's, like, really, really good at following up of that. And because Olimar backers, like, so big, and it hits around Olimar, I'm pretty sure it also hits the IN, and he kills them really early a lot of the time. Okay. But that's something, like, straight up only Shuton does. That's kind of neat. That, but do you feel that that is a more consistent option than, than what I was saying? Like, do you think it's not worth like labbing out or or consistently working on the timings to land actual people grabbing the ledge two framing catch I intercepting think, or whatever i think the backer one to hit ledge hang is good not not when they're already hanging on ledge but them going to oh ledge. when they're hanging out ledge no no no, um, no 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 when they're going to the ledge not to hang not when okay. they're hanging there no uh it's still good to go for it obviously just mixing uh mixing like stuff that like mixing less trumps in there because okay. a lot of the time like people like to hold ledge against all okay them. Yeah, the reason the uh, uh, a reason I ask is like think about like when you watch Palutena's play, like they always go for down tilt at the ledge, right? Like that's like sometimes the ledge trap bear, right? Catch off guard or whatever. Mm -hmm. But like I can think of all the times I've seen Chag or Louis Money or whatever. It's just down tilt, down tilt, down tilt. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But they still go for it every time. Now they don't always get reversal or whatever the way their characters work. It's just different. But I was wondering, is it like worth investing in? maybe up the frequency of our down tilts or our down smashes or our whatever's at the ledge. I actually want to see something real quick about this. Because so I know down tilt is the go-to option for most players. It's it's easy. It's quick. You know, it, it pops them up. Uh, let me look at the frame bit on this. Down tilt is active. Excuse me, yellow fair at the ledge, low key. Like, short out falling yellow fair. I think that is... Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You board. can catch a lot of people with that. So, the hard thing about fair is if they're hanging on the ledge, you can do it. But you got to remember, fair is active only, I think, three frames. Uh, yeah, seven, eight, nine. Uh, bear is four frames is 10 to 13. Down smash is going to be 6 to 12. Or sorry, down tilt is going to be 6 to 12. And then down smash is going to be 10 through 18. Down smash is the most active, but you have to space it a certain way because if not, it pops off the ledge and all this jazz. It's annoying. Um, yeah. But maybe identifying certain characters so it's like, oh, they recover from the uh, to the ledge with a teleport. I'll use down smash. Oh, they recover to the ledge with like a, a hitbox, so to speak, or their body, where it's you know they're they're there the whole time. Maybe I'll down tilt, right? Things like that. Uh, another thing you can do as well is yellow F smash at ledge is unreasonably powerful. Like not all, uh, you can sometimes do it off stage depending on the character uh, or on stage. But if you walk to the ledge where you would like it would go off stage, it essentially is a giant wall that will kill people. You can catch ledge hang. You can two frame. It's it's massive. Um. But maybe, maybe this was something I actually was experimenting with. Um, if you this is but if they this is more of a case of if they grab ledge and it's also the case of it being massive. Uh, with the whole like holding shield on ledge thing, they can't really react to you draw shield down smashing, and yellow basically hits everyone. Are you saying yellow down smash would hit everyone right at the ledge? 
Yeah. Yes. Um, there are some exceptions. You need to be mindful of your spacing relative to the ledge. So an example would be if you're mm -hmm. too close to the ledge, and Sephiroth is an extreme example, but he's the one that comes into mind because I really had to lab it out. You have to be like, you have to let the, the down smash go its full distance. If you're too close, it literally won't hit him. And I know there are other ledge hangs that do that as well. So this goes back to the specific aspect. We would probably need to develop, I'm fighting Terry. Where do I go to the ledge? What do I use? I'm fighting Fox. I'm fighting Sephiroth. Mario. Identify specific options instead of trying to do more one size fits all. You know, uh, there are those options like the left Trump bears or whatever, but go, this needs to be here every time. And I think we probably are doing that, but maybe not as aggressively identifying those things as we need to. Um, yeah, like it's not diving too much. I feel like our ledge game would also improve a lot if we just spend the, the few hours labbing that out versus like different characters. Like, and that helps all of our actually get those kills as well on ledge. Because it, it's, it's frustrating because like something like yellow down air beats everything at the ledge almost except like octa slash right like you can just put it out there and go you you can't win right but it's yeah that's why that's the only reason i send me low down there so much is just because it works for everything but, and like pretty much every recovery in the game when you fuck up the timing it feels terrible you you like especially if you hard land it because you have so much lag on it so is it so, go on so what i've been finding i've been using down more lately is i'm not going for timing reason anymore I'm only using the yellow downer on reactionary recoveries, right? So I can consistently go, okay, you're going to up B or side B or whatever. I'm going to wait for it. And when I see the animation, then I press the downer. And I've been finding that helps a lot more. You don't whiff it as much. You get the sweet spot more often. Okay. So you're just not, like, getting screwed for you whiffing and getting, like, that super bad lag. Yeah. If you're going for it. You only go for it because you reacted to something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I can see that. I think if you're going for, like, the down air or the hard landing lag that's essentially the spike at that point like you're making it read you're like i'm going to catch you recovering right here and i'm gonna punish you for it right that's the thing, why don't we do really drop down good. double jump down air again because it auto cancels and it hits a little no we do do that but it gives sour spot and that doesn't always do what you need and like you do, you're committing a lot more to like kind of letting your opponent know what you're going for in the timing where you can get kind of short up right and mm -hmm. if you you short up you go for the down or if you get a cool if you don't you just back off go for let up when you jump off stage you're basically committed to the downer when you jump off stage. And you know what's committed to not going for a ledge trap. Tim. Whereas I can say, I'm going to go for the downer. Oh, he stole his recovery too long. I can't downer him. All right, now I'm going to down to two frame or just ledge trap. Can Olimar ledge slip? Like, like think like like Falcon or Link, how they do it. I don't think he can. I, I don't think you're going to ledge slip. It's, it's a walk off. So, because my concern is like, wait, wait, are you saying ledge slip and walk off are the same thing? Yeah, you just let, you just walk off lunch. I could have swore it was a unique thing, but you might be right on that. Are you talking about like the woke ledge slip nair thing? Let me something let, similar to that. Let me see if I can find what I'm talking about. Hold on. Are you are you talking about that thing like Cable can do? Or is it jab? Not off not ledge not, not the jab. Not the jab. It's like a thing I remember. No, it's something every character can do. You just you have to be positioned at the end of the stage, and then you walk off slightly. Okay. Oh oh, you're doing the just fall off stage without any drift. Yeah, do you think, yeah, like, yeah, okay. how, do you think that'd be worth doing with Olimar as a way to maybe position those, those, like, rising dares instead of having to, like, run off, jump, and then, you know what I'm talking about? Because, like, the normal way that you position, like, the, the rising dare, do you think, like, ledge slipping off, put it, positioning so you can drift in more easily? Because sometimes on, like, Battlefield, you'll try and put that dare there, but people go in a little too much, and they can dodge stuff. Mm -hmm. Do you think that would be a way to more consistently give you your spacing for it and make it easier to catch the, uh, the, the down air? And make it less big. I would assume it was worth a try. Okay. So I've been doing this with Rosa. Um, instead of that, and all of my Rosa have pretty similar like floatiness and air drift actually. Um, I just short hop with the Rosa, and then like from the short hop, I just hug the wall on yeah. battlefield. And it's actually pretty effective. Okay. But uh, Rosa's downer might be a little bit wider than all of Mars. Um. Mm, maybe I'm not honestly sure. I I mean it's weird because like. Downer feels like it should cover really well. I think a lot of the times we opt to cover the ledge itself as opposed to maybe a little bit lower because when you put, like, down air at the ledge, it tends to just cover all of it and it lingers so long. It's not a terrible idea. But I, I just know sometimes to me, like, and it could be just an Olimar speed thing. I feel like if they drift in, I can't always get there in time to get my aerial out. So I was wondering if maybe, like, doing it that way. And I probably have done it before and I just don't remember it. Uh, would be a way to maybe consistently get to the, the point they're at more often instead of trying to, like, cover just with the ledges but maybe go lower. So, not to get a too off track, but a little while ago, I saw Wadi do this thing, this thing with ICs, where you would get Nana close enough to ledge to set up a ledge trump. 
And that got me thinking, can you reasonably do something with that like that with Pikmin, where you go close enough, you, you jump up, get them to fall down past ledge to stall, like, Firefox or something into a confirmed down air spike? No. When Pikmin fall off the ledge like that, they're intangible. If you were to desync them out oh, of your line, oh, yeah, they're, they're going to be intangible. Your, your best bet sure. would be... I mean, right. Well, okay. wait, versus characters like Fox Mike, don't we just do drop down double jump? Sorry I'm bringing that up again, but, like, he's in, like three seconds of lag no no that is something that should be timed it's just surprisingly difficult to do in the heat of the moment consistently i guess and that's my best answer for why i don't do it all the time why don't we throw a pigment on hitbox um, where we have like a uh, on, I'll hit lag. no that is something i do a lot i will literally side be like uh if people are going like straight up or towards a wall and i uh this is kind of touching around with timbit mentioned where it's like instead of dropping the pigment off with a desync or whatever you just throw the pigment into the wall and it falls down and kind of intercepts them and then can give you more time to maybe fare or something. But you have to ride to them so you can't, like, put a downer out. Because if they're yeah, down, I've they're done doing that something. A few times. Um, Sorry, I've done that a few times with Youngling. It's so consistent. Where I have that with, like, double purple, yeah. I can throw out one of the double, one of the purples at ledge and then abuse the other one to guarantee a spike if, because it covers for both with tech and tech. The, the big thing is, like, when we go out there with Olimar, we are now coming into a rising option, so we can't, like, to get that pigment on them unless they're at, like, ledge height or whatever. We have to go low, fall, and do something, and then rise intercept, which leaves it for, you know, if we fare them, they can tech that pretty reliably if they're really ready for it. So it maybe, and then now we're at the ledge, and they might potentially be above us. So, I... I, I, I do like the throwing in there. Or what you can do instead is, like, run off stage, side B right as you're running off, so you're at ledge level, have it hug the wall of that stage and fall, and then you can immediately rise and try and put a hitbox out to the ledge. Right? So instead of mm -hmm. falling all the way with it and trying to get him to do that. And that is something that I've implemented before. It's... It just... Maybe I'm looking for, like, a one-size-fits-all option that just doesn't exist. And, and realistically, you just need to maintain flexibility in your ledge trapping options and, and constantly swap it up to keep them off guard. Because thinking back to the, you know, the... I can't remember who said it. It was like, why don't we just double jump down air fox up every time? I try that against, like, you know, a good fox player. And they go for these crazy angles and ride the wall just barely. And then I'm slightly off of my timing. And also, when you go off stage like that in particular, you're leaving yourself open to potential reversals. Um, that's just mm -hmm. the timing. Um, mm, I was going to say something. Something I was messing with in my head but haven't got to mess with the matches is hovering with up b above the ledge so you can linger above the ledge really oh long yeah time oh yeah i've done that rarely I do, oh i've done that before i do yeah. that against peaches really more than anything funny enough i'm like okay we can both hover you're gonna come up here eventually um okay. no that's a very powerful option typically when you do that you're gonna end up using a hard down air um if you because you have to be like high or low, low, uh, low enough to the ground to like threaten because if you're too high it's worthless um i do that again oh so it, it, it definitely has value. What I do when I use like the float up down air, I'll use it against recoveries that have like a hitbox that like reaches past the ledge and isn't too big so I won't get clipped or anything. Mario. That's what I, where I usually use it against. Well, not even Mario because I can just call that one out with a down air and time it at least somewhat well and it'll work. Do you find you're consistent at calling that out? Like Mario LB? I find it, uh, like, with down air. Yeah, I do. Okay. Because the thing is, is that he he can't, like, linger out there for a long time. Yeah. He, he has to come back eventually. So if you just throw, if you throw out a down air, it has, like, a 50-50 chance of hitting. And the and you can't and if you even if you miss it, you're not going to eat that big of a punish. Well, my 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 reasoning I ask is so Mario's up B has a couple different like he can angle it like more upwards and more horizontal right for that diagonal angle. Yeah. Um. So when they incorporate that, assuming they're they're not like really stressing their recovery, they have a lot of leeway. And then a lot of the times, you know, the really strong Mario players they they'll try to time or space it to where that last hitbox comes out, which is gargantuan. Uh, and that's something that intercepting is, like, a very difficult, and I find myself getting hit there often. Um, so I, I just, is there, like, are you just looking for the height they're doing it at, and you're consistently trying to meet them there? Because it feels like between the, the variations, they can do it at B, and that massive final hitbox size, like, the really good ones make it not as consistent as I would like. Pretty much, I try and evaluate on if they have any resources left that they can stall with. And like try and dodge the downer, and if they don't, I usually just go for it. Okay, it could. I don't like throw it out like if they're close to ledge at all, or if they're like if or if I think they're gonna up be, I'll throw out if I think that up is their only option. At okay. That point. I wonder if uh it would also just be worth it to like run up 
to ledge, maybe threaten like you're going to jump, shield the final hit, and then try and ledge trump them. Yeah. Um... It's also uh, so many Marios in uh, will just not do anything in disadvantage to try and discourage you from going after them. I feel like. Yeah, Mario is definitely a character where in certain instances, like you can just go out there and intercept him. Yeah, because um, when I uh, go on, when I played Sam T, I literally got so many free advantage hit interactions on him because he just wasn't doing anything. Yeah. In a uh, disadvantage state. Yeah. Okay. Um. What about the more the more tough characters to hit off stage like the sonics the Diddy's. and like the like the pac-mans and stuff the, yeah like i it oh do you guys i don't know how often you you all fight sonic but like do you find it unreasonably difficult to hit him around the ledge like i've even played with sonic I, so much and that shit is fucking impossible. even when he reco- like he'll recover he'll do like the beefy up where he goes past ledge and like back air does whatever i'll down smash and i swear to god he just goes through it yeah uh, that back air is so ledge. meaty for some reason I can tell you at least for ledge, uh, Sonic has a really good uh, ledge snap, and also he has the best ledge in the game. No, no, no. So this, makes sense. The, the <laughs> ledge snap would definitely make it tough, but I'm saying more so when he does like even just anything rising around the ledge, like he's just existing around it because they'll they'll play aggressive, right? Like I'll play Sonic's in a Wi-Fi session or whatever, and he'll just like uh, just rise up, back air me, turn it around, whatever. So I'm like. Is it worth to even play the ledge with them, or do we maybe let them come back and then we go a little bit no, more in and then we stop? I'm Sonic. I'm actually I'm very comfortable in the matchup, honestly. Um, if he's, you basically you assume he's gonna do the the early like media up to back air you, and you get ready to hit him with like a back air or fair if he's gonna do that. And then when you see he's going a little bit lower, then you jump and position the down air. And there's like once he understands his heights, you can understand the height he has to like, up be at once he goes stage for his height he's gonna recover with to the ledge. So a lot of that's just like, you stay on the stage, and you react. You early up beat. All right, I'm on the ground. Forward air, you back air, you. Oh, you're going a little bit lower. Now I'm gonna jump. Wait for the up beat and down air, you. Okay. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. I'll be a lot of like that. right back with you guys. Finish. Like people are mixing in more aggressive options or higher up options. I stay grounded until they have to go to a certain height, and then at that certain height, I go to. Jumping and set. Like, I'm looking to play like fairs, bears, smashes, whatever. Not a big deal. Um, because it's super easy to cover that as long as you stay on the stage. And, yeah. Um, another good example of this is actually... Fox is a good example of that. If you, like, kind of have it a little bit far off. Uh, Peach is a great example of this, right? Where unless they, until they go cer- like a certain low, you're kind of staying on stage and looking like fair. They're up being to, like, float. And if they go super low, then you can kind of chase them deep or like look for a down or two frame when they're up B with yellow. Okay. Um, because I didn't have any more to say on this topic. I did I did have one uh question that I want to follow up with that's a little different, if that's alright. Say what you want, bro. I want you to fucking Myron zone right now. <laughs> um where where do you guys think uh I, I know we all have our differing opinions. Where do you think Olimar's going in 2023? you think he's he's fitting in nicely? Do you think he handles the current meta at a decent... Like, obviously, there's going to be bad matchups in there. But uh, where, where where do you guys feel with him at right now? I can only imagine where DeBuzz puts him. Bottom tier. He, uh, I he, think... He really bottom three. Even matchups with most top tiers. You say even matchups think... with most top tiers? Sorry. Even the slightly losing. Yeah, like, I'm, like, I'm finding things like Kazu actually more reasonable. Fox is pretty reasonable. I'm like... I think he does pretty good against Steve, honestly. I honestly think he might beat Steve. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking as well. I don't think he beats Steve, so, but I do think there's a lot of nice stuff in the matchup, like how if he's mashing up till and we up smash him, it clanks with up till and then we get a free punish. So I agree with a lot of these statements. Um, but do we think that oh, we can... Conf- uh, huh? Oh my god, politician. No, no. I agree with everything. No, 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 no. I agree that Olimar does well against or even or whatever against Kazi. I think he does well against Steve and stuff like that. But do we think that that's enough? Because I can do good against Kazia and then get EWGF three times and lose. Or I can do well against Steve and then going back to the original topic, I overextended an advantage three times and I got car- you know mine carded. Do we think that we, you know, there's gonna we can make that consistent shift to maybe deny those win conditions, focus more on denying that than so much maybe playing our own game? Because Olimar does have the advantage of playing really passive uh, and just getting chip damage and making people just get into kill percent, not always interact. Uh, straight up what I do versus Steve and it works. So I'm not even joking. Like I grinded this ma- I grinded this matchup too much with like five different Steves and like my game plan just works. I don't know what I don't know what else to say. <laughs>
Like, I kind of just throw Pikmin at him, get purples, and kind of just, like, pressure him at, like, sortie range. I'm just trying to mash on Steve. It, we, as weird as it sounds. It's it's I like weird because when I fought, like, Apala, um and stuff, it's like, I'm doing good, I'm doing good, and this is just probably a me issue. It's like, and you slightly messed up, and now you're dead. Oh, and you didn't read that one, and now you're dead. Oh, you wanted to fight him, and now you're dead. Uh, and maybe that's because yeah, I wanted to scrap no Steve playing dog. He, that's like, the thing. Scrapping Steve. I remember, like, I was losing when I was trying to scrap Steve. When I was, like, actually kind of just poking at him the entire time, I, I don't... Again, I played Onan in this, and I was, like... I did not know what he could do, he unless I, like, really hard mess up, because I can just react to a lot of what he does. You're going to pull the Steve record right now. I mean, again, it was me grinding with him, but, like, he got mad. <laughs> Do you find a tournament though? Because we, I, I think we've all experienced the old Steve player does some stupid shit in friendlies, and then the tournament's a to totally different character. He tried camping me. He tried doing a lot of his standard stuff against me. I kind of just disengaged a lot of the time. He does. Uh, I know I've talked to him about. It, and he also thinks Olimar wins now because he doesn't know how to. Like Minecraft just doesn't work in that matchup if Olimar plays around it well, mm -hmm. and he, he honestly just doesn't know how to approach it. Olimar's kind of just poking at him. Okay. Something like a lot of Steve's low key suck against Olimar if you know what you're doing in it. They don't know how to respond. I always say the C player thinks Steve beats Olimar. I mean, Olimar beats Steve. They're a bad C player. Damn, you're saying that about Onan? I see how it is. <laughs> I mean, you don't hear my opinion on Steve players, but I do think they do let things slip through the cracks sometimes. But what I will say about matchups like Steve, and this goes back to what I was saying before, where it's like, it's depending on what you get with. Like, I'm okay with fighting Steve if he hits me with a grab, because I can SDI that, as weird as that sounds. I'm okay. Yeah. Even getting hit by, like, a, a strong hit minecart in a lot of spots. I'm not okay with getting hit by, like, an up tilt, though, right? Or getting hit by, like, a, a rising jab. See, I'm the so, opposite I mean, to that. I would rather get hit by those than the minecart and the anvil. And, and, the, and the back air. Back air is... Oh. It's not matter a lot, too. Like, um, I'm at 70. Hey, no, and yeah, yeah no, that's what I do against Steve. The way I fight Steve is I specifically play around, like... I play around up tilt and I play around minecart. I do like. find Steve players love to walk you and be like, up tilt, up tilt. I'm like, you're not even thinking, man. You're just you're just throwing it out. You're just hoping <laughs> I fall in this one, man. Yeah, because yeah. you definitely do. Get I mean, I even do that when but, I play Steve, so I guess. But, I'm it, you know, so we have Steve. We, we've got that pretty comfortably. I, I definitely don't like, you know, deep side too hard when I play Steve against Steve. But what about Min Min? I think we do really good against Min Min. I think we honestly do. Is that be every fucking Min Min I played against? The trick so. is Min Min is using Wing Pig Banish. I'm not even capping. Wing Pig Banish is how you beat Min Min. That and I'm gonna I be that, also just. Well, I'm gonna be that guy. The buzz is: Are you are you Wing Pig Min dashing on reaction to them arms in? Because wouldn't Ram Ram just catch that? Uh, you throw on Pikmin and you force them to deal with that. And while they're dealing with the Pikmin, you Wing Pig Dash. Um, okay. Ram Ram can catch it, but like Ram Ram is kind of like. It only hits up at a very specific range, and they jump. They have to, like, full off the catch wing Pikmin Dash consistently. Okay. So it's, You have to kind of play around within the matchup, but if you use Pikmin Toss and the wing Pikmin Dash, it's really good pressure she has trouble dealing with. No. Yeah. Especially white Pikmin into Pikmin Toss. I mean, wing Pikmin Dash, because, like, you know, it's easy to kill white. It just, it's from so far away, so it's a perfect range to wing Pikmin Dash from. Yeah. Okay. I think another character I think we have to bring up, actually another two characters, the first one is Pyromithra. <laughs> I don't mind, mm, I don't mind it. I don't mind it. What do you? What do you? What are you not liking about that? No, I mean, I think we have to bring her up because she's still really common and like, it's especially she's kind of like spacing out with like honestly like myth or even sometimes like pyro moves. It can it can be kind of hard for I, at least Olimar to deal with. Her. And also when she hits you, I mean, yeah, they're gonna get their stuff when they hit you. You need good SDI. For, you can stop a lot of combos with myth or minimize them with the good SDI, knowing when to whistle. Um, I think pairing goes a long way because you treat like Mithra and Air like Byleth and Air, where if you parry that last hit, you're mm -hmm. opening them up. Uh, Pyra is tending tends to be the more frustrating one on my end, just because their range and yes. power is frustrating. But I hate Pyra. But <laughs> I think I think we have to approach it kind of like how we're handling Steve, where we're like, I don't really need to fight you. Like, I'm just gonna throw shit, run away. You know, I can shield your stuff coming in. Like that's gonna. I don't need to punish it. I just need to not get hit by it, right? Because then I can retake distance and get away. And then you can intercept them with stuff like purples, or maybe use reds as a good way to get, like, you know, uh, latch stuff on, get some damage, make them try and kill it. Fire moves and always kill it effectively. There's a lot of stuff to play around with there. And I think you just have to sh um, shift your gameplay, uh, depending on if it's power or a little bit more consistently, and just have really mm -hmm. powerful defensive play. I think making sure your DI is on point, making sure your 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 shield slash yeah. parries are on point, and uh, you know, being good about 
punish them off stage because they are very vulnerable. I think they're like they they to me are punishable off stage like how Cloud should be. You can knock them off stage and kill them, and that's just knowing when do you down tilt their upbeat, when you know the the Pyra upbeat, when do you down air the Mithra upbeat, whatever it is, right? Because the Mithra upbeat's got such a massive hitbox. So you you might just be or not you, but just Olimar in general needs to make a clear distinction between each of them and be able to seamlessly swap between that. Uh, Cloud to yeah. me is way way worse of a problem than Pyra Mithra. Oh no, that was the second character I was going to say, and Rob because I forgot about him, but we can get to Rob later. Oh, yeah, Rob, Cloud was the yeah, second character. I, I know that was weird for me. But the more I play the Rob matchup, the more I'm actually fine with it. Um, Rob? Because you play, like, super lame, and the fact that his nair is super slow gives us lots of chances to intercept, like, him doing nairs. Um, maybe using, like, tilts and stuff. Honestly, a lot of times you can just jump away from tilt pressure, like, jump away, throw a Pikmin, and you can't pressure that particularly well. Something I noticed, especially, uh, to add on to what you said, a lot of the time, if you manage to get Gyro, uh, Rob especially kind of struggles, because you can hold on to it and toss Pikmin at him and force him to commit to something. And he's not really good at, in those situations, because... What Rob likes to do in the matchup is he likes to use Gyro to kind of block Pikmin because it bounces up. And he uses that to kind of close in on you and cover space. I know, you don't actually use Pikmin toss, like... Well, I don't know how relevant this is, I do actually feel the same about Pac-Man. I play this matchup, like, every night. And it's like, when you get, like, Galaxian, whatever other fruit Pac-Man uses, it's so good to just be able to jump away, or run away, just spam double purples and let Pac-Man mash, and you not really be able to do much about it. Because I feel like a lot of Pac-Man's value versus Olimar is having Fruit plus Nair, or Fruit plus Fair if you try to intercept in midair. And he doesn't really get much value out of either of those without his Fruits. Because like the best he can do is like Fair, Nair, Fair, Fair, and then try and put you off stage, but you can just like ignore it, because you have a very far up B. What I'm hearing for a lot of these characters is that the most important thing isn't so much always what we're doing. It's just making sure they never get to do what they want. Absolutely. Um, I think uh, this leads to the other character, though, that we are currently avoiding when we should 100% talk about is Cloud. I mean, I, I, I just give up first lap. I just, I've tried it, and good luck on that one, y'all. The, um, so, I... um, oh. the, the, Sorry, I just want to say this. The best, uh, I guess, success I've had against Cloud was exactly what I just said. Your sole purpose is to consistently almost scrap with him, but make sure he never gets large disadvantage sequences on you. I, I remember, this is a couple years back, I was fighting Cole, I think it was like 2021, and we went like game five last year or whatever, and he managed to clutch it out. And the entire time in my head, I was thinking, I, it doesn't matter what happens as long as I do not let him kill me off of a single disadvantage play. And the, the what happened was game five were going, he hit me in the air once, and it wasn't like a combo, so to speak, but it was like a, hey, I'm going to keep kind of soft resetting this advantage state on you, and then I'm going to finally catch you off guard because you're not doing it right. But if you can consistently... Didn't, didn't his downer shield poke you and you died for it? It was either that or something, I don't remember. It, it's some misfortune in my life. Um, <laughs> But as long as you can keep resetting against a character like Cloud, it's going to be hard. But I, I, uh, optimizing your disadvantage is going to be so much better because I, I don't know what to do to consistently kill him uh, outside of straight hits. You cannot edge guard him consistently. It doesn't work. His up B just wins. His mobility is Giant is the biggest myth ever. Um, so it's like, instead of doing that, you go, okay, we're going to go back to neutral. We're going to go back to scrapping. You know, I can get through purples. I can open you up and I can do this. But as long as you're like, I, and it's kind of like what we were saying about Pyra. Just don't let them kill you. Because they will fuck up eventually. You will read them eventually. Because their their kit is admittedly uh, straightforward when they're fighting you, right? It's like the back air, the forward air. Those are very telegraphed because the direction they're facing. Cross slashes up close and then things like dash attack. So you can kind of identify what they want to do. But you need to be so stoic in that gameplay and not letting them play their game that you just, you're essentially just trying to not time them out, but wear them out to where they fuck up. That is the only way this that lead, I think... This leads to something that DeBuzz and I have talked about a lot, actually, but then what do you do about if Cloud Limit camps you? What the fuck does that even matter? Does he have a lead? Why'd you, why'd you let me the lead? No, it's not even that. The problem is, like, he gets better stats in general when he gets Limit, and it's really hard you to... You mean, like, actually... movement camping you with, like, back air and shit, and, like, back airing you and then running away right away? And then, not even just even running away, it's kind of like, on big stages, he can kind of, like, he can kind of fish for limit, and then he can use the stab boost he gets to then pressure Olimar. Olimar can't really deal with, like, speed boosted cloud at all. I, I think we talked about this, the buzz, right? 
Yeah. I think yeah. if he's getting limit, get your ideal lineup. It could be two yellows and a purple. It could be two purples and a yellow. I think those are the two colors you want to be working with the most, right? Yellow is going to be a really good way to catch. Because one, if he's jumping, then that potentially lets you run under him and uh, maybe, maybe anti-air him. And also, if you get two purples, you can start horizontally pressuring. Sure, he might kill them. But if you can sacrifice one Pikmin to maybe lag his back air enough to then run in and grab or jab or open him up, that goes a long way. You need to be matching what he's doing by playing reactionary, that defensive reactionary I was talking about earlier. You can't, like, if you're too passive, he's on top of you. But if you're too, like, greedy and, and wanting to swing the knees, you, he's just going to whiff punish you. So you have to be like, I'm in this mid-range almost a little bit further. I'm throwing Pikmin. I'm making you respond. When I notice you're getting close, I stop. I change my game plan, and it's now focused on denying whatever it is you're going for right now. It's not easy. Like, it, it's going to be one of the hardest things, but I don't think Limit inherently is going to give him some massive advantage because you can get double purple, and Cloud, like every other character in the game, you hit him with a purple, you're just going to start going. And since he becomes like a fast faller with that Limit, you can really tech chase him to hell. I mean, I get, Limit is like a really big deal, though. He, it's not only like a really strong mechanic, but also fucking conditions for free, like shield for free. Yeah, it definitely is going to be a powerful tool. But I mean, if you're if you're committed to playing this matchup, then I think what I'm saying where you have to kind of have that flexibility in your gameplay and ready to react and stop him is the, as far as I'm seeing, the only way to consistently deal with him. And it's still going to be tough. And you're probably going to have to parry a lot or really, like, maybe you have to focus on how he's pressuring your shield. What is How many times is he back airing? How many times is he forward airing? What's he doing after he's doing those, right? So you can try and find the little patterns in there and go, now I spot dodges grab. Now I roll out of his, you know, his cross slash or whatever. Because you're you're fighting an uphill battle automatically. I do think touching on what you were saying before about like tech chasing cloud, I think so it was like a year ago when you did the uh, like double down smashing cloud consistently. Obviously, it isn't just cloud; it's like long characters as oh, well. Yeah. But I think that's really something we should all work on because oh. it sounds very very. Oh consistent. yeah, double double hit down smash off jab block is insane. You just have to make sure their legs are facing you typically um yeah yellow gives you a little bit of leniency as well where i don't think you always need the legs facing you but yeah i mean uh to buzz and i had a conversation like way earlier in ultimate where it was just like explain they're like talking about down smash is absolutely insane when it comes to tech chasing you just keep people low to the ground and you keep punishing them um but sometimes you know that's gonna have to reset or you're gonna have to let them go away and you won't always be able to follow up but it's just i think going back to it deny him the advantage so maybe go to a bigger stage where you have a bit more room to run away and really mix up those recoveries just like make him play your game if he wants to get limit i guess that's fine it's gonna be annoying but he'll come in eventually and if he doesn't you know when he's running away to get limit it's not like you need to you don't always have to run away you can maybe like pseudo threaten him so you're playing a bit more aggressive you're taking stage control you're saying hey i'm around you i might swing a little bit kind of shark under a platform do whatever it is but you need to respect me because if he's just sitting there doing it you can throw Pikmin at him. You can rising there and mix him up. You can do all that stuff. Uh, and it, and then if you're really pressuring him, uh, clouds are pretty trigger happy with their up out of shield, some, uh, especially against Olimar. Start baiting it out, right? Punish it. They, they will flinch. I promise you. Um, but I, I, I think that cloud is thankfully not the most common character. There, there are a few standout players, at least, that I would... What recommend. meta are you living in where Cloud is... What meta are you living in? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I'm what so... meta are you living in, dog? I can't even... I, need, I, I, need to... I cannot even name a top Cloud player in Florida. On my way to Florida, I guess. Like, when, like my experience at big tournaments is, like, Spargo and and, and Cola. Like, uh, what are some other Clouds out there? Nico, Nico Scar, Scar. I have never Enhanced. played Scar in person in the day of my life. Enhanced doesn't leave his region typically, as far as I'm aware. I've never seen him at a major that I've been to, except maybe like one in NBA or something like that. Uh, Nico, you're right. I haven't played Nico in bracket. Uh, black Black Twins in a bat. I think. Also, barely see Black Twins. Like I, it, they true. they are definitely out I'm there. I'm, I live in Toronto. Uh, Myron, the thing with Scar is he just doesn't he doesn't want to travel, but he straight up beats like Skittles and a bunch of other people. Unfortunately, I do not fight those people, so I can't reference them. Yeah. You guys, you know, you all live in areas up there, more northern, so you're you're probably see them more. But southern wise, like there probably are clouds. Don't get me wrong, but it's not like when I go to a major, if I fight like a cloud, I'm like it's either I don't know who they are, or or it's like you know one of the big ones like the Spargo or the Polish or something like that. Um, and typically, my experience is the the ones who I don't know or I do run through are a lot easier to deal with, but I could just be better than them. But I think everything I've said still reigns true with these cloud players. Like you, you can beat them. It's going to be tough, but 
you have to commit to, to denying them their win condition. That is equally as powerful as you getting yours. Because at the end of the day, your character has chip damage and range. Theirs doesn't. And sometimes it's, it's effective to play long enough to where they will fuck up first. Right? Maybe your goal is to put up that, that defense, that consistent, I'll make you navigate around my shit until you, you make a mistake and I'll win because of it. Because I think something like Cloud is going to be very different than something like Fox, where Fox is on top of you all the time. He wants to fight. Cloud is more, I will be on top of you sometimes, but other times I'm going to play mid-range. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take my time with it. And those gaps can be in your favor sometimes. I will say that I am probably going to have to wrap it up here in a couple of minutes. Um, but maybe if you guys all want to do this next week or something again, maybe you think of some yeah, more specific sure. topics. If anyone has stuff in mind they want to discuss, we could potentially set it up for another another time next week or something like that. Uh, sure. But I, I think there was some good discussion here, some good stuff to, to think about. Oh, one other thing I want to add, this is like for the last Trump thing I mentioned before. Um, Something that I want to try and adopt more when I do less shit. This is just to finish it off. Um, something, um, something that I see really like a lot of the time Japanese players do. Um, especially, uh, what they do is they'll trump, and you know how a lot of people air dodge in mm -hmm. afterwards. Yeah. Uh, what they like to do is they wait for the air dodge in, and then they just like that. They would. What do they do after that? Um. I mean, all of our hits, both all DI anyways, but, like, something they'll like to do is they'll hang on the ledge and wait for them to air dodge in, because everyone does. And then, punish the air dodge. and then they get a free spike. Interesting. But just something to maybe think about. Do you think that would be worth for Olimar? Because you can definitely hit your spike, it's just you have to... It requires the specific uh, timing and spacing. Is it... I mean, it's, it's something I'll at least try. I think we should maybe just incorporate less Trump in general, because, again, Olimar oh, I agree. hits it. I agree. So. Olimar's less Trump is absolutely fantastic. I'm just too lazy to have grinded it out so far. Not going to disagree with you on that one. Um... Yo, <gasps> hear me out. Let's Trump down here, though. Yeah, yeah. That's actually oh, true, true, but you have to, like... It's true on all DI, but you have to, like, pay attention to the DI, and that's why I said just wait for the inevitable air dodge in. Yo, but yeah, yo, Pikmin is probably very, like, easy to get. It, it works on a couple characters, though. It oddly works on Steve, because he has a super weird combo weight. Hmm. Or, like, to be comboed. Interesting. Because I do that shit against Steve's all the time. Honestly, though, Steve's... I don't really have a problem with trapping Steve or Edgeguarding him. My, my issues are the, the, the clouds, the, the fucking Diddy Kongs. It's just these players I play against or I see in Brad... Or the wolf is surprisingly annoying. Like, I can do it, but it's not as consistent as I'd like. Um... But no, Ledge Trump is I, I wholeheartedly agree with that. Um, does anyone have any any closing thoughts uh you wanna say before I, I end up heading out? Nothing I, I can really think of. I think we covered a lot. Alright. Um he has bottom three. All right. Actually though, I might be on to something with that. Bottom three. Possibly bottom one. Possibly by skill issue. Um <laughs> Okay, well, good talk. If if you all want to do that, or if other people end up wanting to join in another time, definitely give me a give me a ping. I would be happy to do this again sometime. Maybe we can have more. Uh, someone can set up some topics beforehand, and we can try to stick really to those because we're not we're not really a set kind of thing. We're just kind of feeling it out right now. Uh, for anyone who wants to go back and watch this, if you missed anything, I will be uploading it to YouTube. Um, so you'll be able to watch the bot for that. Um, all right, I will see you guys later. See you later. Okay. See ya. Alrighty, y'all. Appreciate you watching. Hope you enjoyed it. It's be on uh, YouTube sometime soon. Um, maybe we'll do it again sometime. Uh, play a little more. Play a little more. Let me see if it's streaming. Do I have? Do I, should I host someone? I'll host someone. We'll find someone to host. <laughs> Bottom point five character. Olimar's top tier. People just don't want to accept it because they would have to accept that they're not good enough. It's it's a hard pill to swallow when you're like, I'm the problem. <laughs> it was it was fun to do just because I don't think people see that very often. Like we don't we, all of our players don't get together to do that shit. Almost ever.
Who am I? Who am I gonna? I'm gonna raid Dinner Pants. Let's let's go show Dinner Pants some love, guys. He's doing an open lobby. Something about Wi-Fi. Seems like a nice guy. I uh, hope you all enjoyed watching. I will talk to you later.